Okay, we are now recording and welcome to our Tuesday night corporate training uh, where we join together and we interface with those of you that are new, some of you that are restarting and those of you that are I guess, considering what you're going to do with the business. So we're glad to, to welcome you tonight and we're excited to see you. And uh, tonight is a special night because um, we have decided to introduce to some and perhaps reacquaint others with our newest uh, division of Color Me Beautiful, which is Color Alliance. And for those of you who have never met Jill Wylott, our executive director with Color Me Beautiful, you do not know what the meaning of assertive, go after you want, what, what you want, and don't stop until you get it. That's how I would describe Jill Wylott. She single-handedly uh, made a decision to call Color Me Beautiful, knock on the doors, make an appointment, and come in and sit down and introduce the concept of Color Me Beautiful purchasing the Color Alliance system, which was originally under a company called Beauty for All Seasons. And I'm not sure how many times it took Steve to meet with Jill. I know that, that, that Jill probably came in probably two or three times, maybe even more than that. Uh, she can tell the story better than I, but, um, and she, she convinced our CEO, chairman of Color Me Beautiful to acquire Color Alliance and add it to the family of brands and color systems that we currently own. And we're excited that he did that uh, because the Color Alliance uh, consultants have certainly come in and made their mark within the Color Me Beautiful family. So we're excited to welcome you tonight and to uh, introduce you to our executive director. She is our most senior executive with uh, Color Me Beautiful and uh, is the thought leader, um, the one that everyone goes to when they have a question about color analysis, Jill Wylott. So Jill, thank you so much for uh, being willing to come on and introduce um, Color Alliance to everyone. This is gonna be an exciting time. And we're excited about not only hearing it live straight from you, but also being able to share this recording uh, with everyone, you know, people that are thinking about coming into the business as well as those that are in. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome to our corporate training tonight. Well, thank you, Sharon. You know, I really appreciate this. I have wanted to share about Color Alliance to everyone for a very long time. So this is one of those things that come to pass that you kind of hope for. And I am so glad that I'm able to share with you. Yeah. To add to um, Sharon's story about uh, Color Me Beautiful acquiring Color Alliance, is that when she says assertive, I, I never think of myself as assertive. I'm persistent, persistent. but I don't feel I'm, I'm a very assertive person overall, even though you know I can be, I, I, I can be, but I don't think I probably would be known as assertive overall, but then who, you know, that's just me knowing, thinking of myself. <laughs> who would ever admit that? <laughs> <laughs> But I am very persistent and I was very persistent with color lines because I have had a passion for color lines since 1989. And in 1989, Color Alliance was introduced to me and my business. And I was very excited because the first time I had a palette that was really made for me because I was one of those borderline people. When the trainer was doing the training first, she put me in summer and everybody else disagreed with her. And so I didn't know that. So I was just putting drapes on me every day. And Ed, would, my husband would say, what are you doing? I said, I'm draping myself again because I just don't see it. <laughs> so I would be draping over and over. And then the gal, the trainer who, um, had done me, she said, well, let me just look at you again. Now, this is back in the Four Seasons days. And let me just uh, take a look again, because there was controversy when I was doing the training. So then she put me into a spring and I was happy as a spring because the citrusy colors I really responded well to. Mm -hmm. 
But yet I was a little, you know, kind of there. I say, well, yes, I need this citrusy colors, but I also need a little bit of value. And, and I kind of do this little dance about um, what I needed to do within the spring palette. So when Color Lines was introduced and I received my palette for a contrasting panache autumn, I was just thrilled because I had my citrusy colors, but I also had the teals and I had all the colors that I felt really good in. So I said, it's me, it's finally me. <laughs> and so that was my reaction to my palette when I was first in life. My passion started in 89. And when uh, different, you know, we merged with the company and then the owner died and they were going out of business. And I thought they can't just let the system die in the mountain, in the cloud or in the, you know, wherever the computer was. We need to have it for the world. The world needs it. So it wasn't that I was so assertive, but I was passionate. I was very mm -hmm. passionate yeah. that this is such a great um, system that I just didn't want to see it gone from the world. And I knew, I knew that other consultants were as passionate at, uh, as I was. And so that's where this comes from is years of just loving the system and the passion that's behind it. So I would say I'm also a believer and I always um, present things before the Lord. And when I was starting my business, this is even before Color Alliance, that I just presented it to him and I knew the answer was, yes, this is where I'm to be in my uh, lot in life. And um, so I also had that grounding that no matter what obstacles came along, and I could have quit hundreds of times because mm -hmm. there's obstacles that come, but I knew this is what the Lord wanted me to do. And so when I went to see Steve, you know, I am um, in talking with him, I would pray. And so I would just say, smooth the pathway, Lord, smooth the pathway. <laughs> and so then when Steve finally did, he kind of looked, we had a, a party for Sandy and, um, and Teresa when they came to meet everybody. And so he, we had, you know, food and stuff. And so we invited him to come in and he says, you know, I don't really know how I acquired this. <laughs> You know, so it wasn't that I talked him into it, but I just felt the way was laid that this was supposed to be part of Color Me Beautiful. Mm -hmm. So it's not that I'm such a fast talking, yeah, this is, you know, type of thing, but it was just a passion. And I hope that as I share here tonight, that passion will come forth. Maybe it's a little bit too much. I'm a teacher at heart. I'm more than a salesperson. I'm a teacher. And so as I go through my PowerPoint that I spent lots of time putting together, that um, I want to introduce you to Color Lines for those who have been um, new to Color Lines and just been trained recently. Hopefully it will pull everything together and refresh the things you learned. For those who have been in for uh, years, maybe it will refresh and excite you again to, oh yeah, I need to get out and do more with it because we change people's lives as we work with this. And, um, so for those of, who, of you who have never heard about it, maybe I get a little bit detailed, but you will know exactly what it's all about. And so um, hopefully we will be able to, um, I hope you can hear me okay, it's unstable. So um, hopefully it's okay. Anyway, what we're going to do is look, look at a thorough look at Color Alliance and what it, it's made up of. So in beauty, we talk about color harmony, is the secret. So we're just talking about beauty in general and color harmony is really the secret to beauty. And so if we look at some of these beautiful sceneries, we can see how the gorgeous colors are just balanced and beautiful in God's creation. We just see uh, how beautiful the colors come together. So I have specifically put this sentence here because beauty is the result of colors that complement, contrast, and balance each other in precise, predictable relationships. So when we're looking at our clients, and we want to find this beautiful harmony of colors, 
we'll be able to show them what complements, what contrasts, and uh, balances them. And it's always a precise predictable because it's going to just work with them and they don't have to worry that next month, unless they change a hair color or something, that this does uh, is going to continue to work. If we look at this scenery, we're, we see a grandeur about it. We see all these beautiful grays, light to deeper as the light shines on it. Between the texture and the uh, values of the grays, uh, there's a beauty about it. And then here we see these dark green forest um, trees against that neutral gray and is very striking. We have the white fluffy clouds. And so we say beauty is an alliance of colors in natural harmony with, with each other. So I have here gray because everybody has shades of gray that are going to work for them. So I thought, oh, I'll, I'll add some of the ultimate gray that is uh, the Pantone color of the year along with the illuminating. But gray Gray is um, a color that everybody has tones of gray that will work better for them. And so we want to see how it harmonizes with each individual so that they're working with colors that are going to balance and complement them. So when we talk about color harmony, color lives is based on color harmony. Because we know harmony is the foundation, color harmony is the foundation of visual beauty. So here we have a gal who is a true crescent autumn. And when we look at her color, we can see how beautiful it flows into the autumn foliage. And her palette will be fine tuned and really harmonizing with her. And so we're going to go through what we do in Color Alliance. So we say welcome to the Alliance, not just the harmony of colors and beauty, but we're going to show you more about our exciting Alliance with our system of color analysis called Color Alliance. Now, um, art and science come together in our system of color Alliance. And the result is a unique, individualized lifestyle color palette. And this particular palette is for a vivid cerulean autumn. Now, like I had talked about before, uh, my passion for color and when I found my own palette and I was so excited that it was finally me, really me, uh, I'm a vivid panache autumn. And that means my skin is from the yellow red, my hair is from the yellow, and my eyes are from the blue green. And we're going to see this as we go through the concept and how we work with it. So each person will have um, three parts to their seasonal name, and the palette would be individualized. So let's take a look at that. Realizing that four seasons alone could not be used to describe the beautiful rainbow of individual palettes, the next, next logical step in color revolution was a computer-assisted program. And so although we began with the four seasons, it was further separated into 372 different classifications of seasonal names, and there's um, multitudes of palettes, thousands and thousands of palettes that we would work with. So we don't just have 372 palettes. So what is Color Lines? We talked about it's where art and science come together. And so what we want to do is help our clients to find uh, their maximum beauty potential. And we do that with our unique system because it's firmly grounded in scientific measurements. But we also use the timeless principles of art. And from that, then it produces a color palette that's very specific to the person because it complements their skin, hair, and eye color. You can see here how this would be represented of her skin, her eye, and her hair color. And so I'm going to go through and show you the steps that we get to identify the skin and the hair and the eyes. And then those colors are what puts together the palette so it's individualized to the person. We also have um, colors for makeup that we would coordinate with charts to help uh, flow into the different seasonal names. So there's not another system out there quite like this. It's highly personalized. And so we call it a unique alliance between an individual and their own best colors.
So going back to color harmony is the foundation of visual beauty. We're going to look at how the color alliance system fits into it. So what we do is we find, like I said before, the overall skin, hair, and eye color. And from that, then, uh, we're going to be able to find what the system is. So you'll see each of these coordinates will have a number that will represent um, that person's coloring. And so we'll take a look at that. And like I said before, then the palette is unique to that individual. So we again see the beautiful autumn foliage, and it's a little deeper than the picture before I had of an autumn, uh, because this color looks best with her. So if I put her this picture of Felicity with that other foliage, it's not going to be representing as well because this has a little bit more um, strength in the color. And so it balances with her a little better. And so her palette then is fine tuned to her own coloring. Now, this is where we said that color lines gives us 372 classifications and names, and that includes um, the three seasonal names. And so by using the different seasonal uh, names that we have, and I'm going to uh, explain them a little bit in a moment, uh, you're going to understand why we can come up with those classifications. And then why the lifestyle palettes could vary even within another vivid cerulean. There'll be smaller um, differences, but there would be some differences because of the coordinates we choose for the skin, the hair, and the eyes. So it's very exciting as we work with that. So um, just to let you know, the Color Alliance uh, theory and system is based on the Munsell color theory, M-U-N-S-E-L-L. -L. You can go to a Wikipedia, you can go to online and put in Munsell, you can go to encyclopedia, you can go to a dictionary, and you'll be able to read about the Munsell color theory. They use the term light wheel uh, because we're thinking in terms of how light reflects off paint or fabric or people. And so the length of the lightweight helps us to determine the colors overall. But everybody um, really talks about color wheel. So we're going to, even though we're thinking light wheel, we are talking about the color wheel. And I'll be referring to the color wheel uh, as we go through the presentation. And so we use 10 colors. So you'll notice it's 10 colors, not 12, that the Munsell color theory uh, has in their um, uh, analysis here. And so this color theory uses the terms hue, value, and chroma. So the whole Munsell color theory is based around hue, value, and chroma. So we're going to look at it at, in um, regards to people. And so if we looked at each of these different hues, each one is representing the hue or color family name. So if we're looking at yellow red, so let's just say each band here represents a band of color and we take out the yellow red slice. We're going to see that um, it's yellow red, but it goes from very light to very dark. It goes from almost neutral to a very high um, chroma within the um, yellow red. And so that's what we're going to be looking at is this huge grid of color and where people fall in alignment to it. So every color that we look at, again, it doesn't matter if it's paint on the wall, fabric on the sofa, uh, landscape, uh, or people. Every um, color we look at has a hue basis. So this is the blue hue basis. So in blue, we can go lighter, we can go darker. That's value, the lightness or darkness of the color. Then we have chroma. And chroma, this would be a very pure form of um, this particular blue. And as we bring it down lower in chroma, it is not as bright and saturated. So we'll see that it eventually becomes neutral. So we're going to look at hue, value, and chroma in human coloring so that you can understand how the palettes are actually developed. And like I said, I get a little detailed here, but I'm a teacher at heart, so that's why. <laughs> and you get a better understanding of it that way. So don't let me put you to sleep. Okay, so we say Hugh is the color family name. So when we look at her eyes, we would say blue eyes. But 
are they blue blue are they blue gray are they purple blue are they green blue are they blue green where do they fall in the whole scheme of blues and in color lines we want to know that and then we would say oh look at that redhead walking down the street and although we would color a redhead you can see the hue really flows into the yellow red hue and so we're going to differentiate, just like I said, I was a uh, contrasting panache autumn. It's going to, panache reflects my hue combination. And so we're going to use coordinates to find each person's hue combination as we work with it. So the second part of the seasonal name will indicate um, what the hue is of their skin, hair, and eyes. And so we have nice poetic names that we give uh, to people instead of going into that long dissertation of eyes are from the blue, green skin is from the yellow, red hair is from the yellow. So we have 16 middle names for winter, 15 for summer, 31 for autumn, and 31 for springs. So here we have the cerulean autumn, all skin, hair, and eyes brown eyes come from red, yellow, red, or yellow hues. Eye colors from yellow, green to purple, blue, and we don't have a natural coloring, actual purple or red, purple uh, eyes, hair, skin. But if somebody wants to have red, purple hair, then if you do their natural um, coloring in the skin, hair, and eyes, then you can advise, yeah, that should harmonize with you, or no, that's going to really clash with you. <laughs> so you can even give advice on very different uh, colors in the hair, but you need to start with the natural process to see the harmony. And so here we have an animated spring, and here we have an azure uh, summer, and a dynamic winter. So it's kind of fun to uh, think in terms of the hue basis and all the fun, pretty names that come out that would describe it. So uh, hue is the first thing we look at. The second thing we look at is value. Remember hue value chroma? So value is the lightness or darkness of a color. And so in color lines, we look at the relationship from the skin to the eyes, the skin to the hair, and the eyes to the hair. And we look at it according to lightness and darkness. So if we had a, a grayscale photo of that person, it's easier to see, but we'll still be able to see it here. So if any of you ever think about uh, wanting to take the training, in the kit will be a value scale. And you can go to any art supply store and find a value scale also. But ours will say light, medium, and dark, which the normal value scale does not in, um, in most art supply stores anyway. So when we look at value, we're looking at skin to hair, skin to eyes, and eyes to hair. We're going to see this scale here has light hair. The blonde is a light hair. The deep brunette is a dark hair color. But we just don't look at hair. We're looking at skin to hair. So she has skin light, hair light, and eyes medium. Puts her into light category. So we'd go into all of this in training. But right now, you'll at least get an understanding of what we're looking at. Here, she's got light skin with uh, medium hair and medium eyes, which gives her the true name. Here, she has... Um, medium skin, dark hair and dark eyes, which her first part of her middle, her, her first part of her three names will be vivid. And then we have contrasting light to dark. And uh, we need one light and one dark for a person to fall into contest. And you say, well, why is this important? Well, as part of um, the analysis, getting them into the right uh, combination of colors. But when a person puts on their colors and their combining colors are maybe they're light and they have a very dark color on, it doesn't balance well with them. So we want to do things to help it to balance better. So the whole purpose for us working with values is to get a person in the right combinations of the way they put the colors together. It will make a big difference. And then um, it also helps us in the selection of blush, lipstick, and lip liner that will balance more with the individual. So it's a lot of good information that comes from a person knowing value. Uh, whoops, wrong way. 
Then the third thing we look at is chroma. And we look at chroma in skin, hair, and eyes. So we do differ in that we just don't go by um, hair color. We go by skin color, hair color, and eye color to get them into a palette that's very balanced with them. So we would say this lady here has low chroma hair is a cooler because low chroma is cooler. Here she has light hair, but it's high chroma. We can see yellow in the hair. So we can actually see the color because it's very high chroma. Now I put these two together so that you can see both of them are light in the hair, but one cooler, one's warmer because of the brightness of the saturation. Down here, they're both medium in the hair color. She would be lower chroma because we don't readily see, is it rose tinged brown? Is it ashen brown? Where does it fall in um, the hue itself? Where here we can actually see it because it's so bright and so saturated in the color. So when we look at it, here we have a uh, winter, a spring, an autumn, and a summer. And we're looking at these two would be lower chroma, these two would be higher chroma. So I have a test for you. If we're looking at these two skin tones, which skin tone is lower chroma? The woman at the front or the woman at the back? Front. The front. Yes, it would be the front. Hi, Beatrice. Yes, Hi, definitely Jill. it you would be you. the front. <laughs> okay, so here we have one. Which hair color is lower in chroma? The hair oh. to the left or the hair to the right? The right. right. Lower the right. chroma is what? The right. Because right. right, it's cooler, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's cooler, mm -hmm. not as golden. Okay, so then we're looking at eye color. Which pair of eyes are brighter? Eyes at the top or eyes at the bottom? Bottom. Bottom. Yeah, bottom. The bottom. Therefore, which ones are higher in chroma? The ones at the top or the ones at the bottom? The bottom. Bottom. The bottom is higher. <laughs> See how easy it is to start to identify? Yeah. It's easy to start to identify um, hue, value, and chroma as we look at it. So we have this wonderful tool. So in the color lines kit, there are 12 sets of coordinates. And each set has multiple colors within each set. And so if you came into color lines, we would train you on how the uh, coordinates are set up. We arrange it according to hue hue, we arrange it to uh, value and to chroma. So you'll see how intricate the following is between looking at all three areas to find the best all over overall color. Now, you might think, oh, this is so complicated. It's really not. Actually, I think it's easier in the long run that you have these checks and balances that you can be looking at. But uh, what happens is once you understand the setup, this is the core, the crutch of the whole color line system. And so understanding how they're set up makes you go through a color analysis really quick because you'll identify um, their hue, go to the groups that would have hue, you'd look at their value, go to the ones that are closer in value, and you would just march right through very quickly the coordinates overall. Now, uh, we also would show you exactly where you put the coordinates because there's something we're looking for when we work with the coordinates. So you, we do the skin and the hair and the eyes, and I'm not going through all that because I'm not training you, but I want you to see what we're doing. So we would end up with two hair, two eyes and two skin out of that process. And we teach you each step of the way. And what we want is the final hair, eyes and skin to look just like the person. So it's really kind of fun because when you get to that point and you have two hair, two eyes and two skin and you're kind of rearranging and seeing and finally you go, oh, bingo, that's it. That's representing her coloring. So it's, you know, it's lots of fun and you get all excited when you, <laughs> when you come up with that. Okay, so then um, we have another tool that we have that we use is the hue level drapes. We have four sets of drape in red, purple, red, yellow, red, and yellow. So there's three drapes in each of the groups. And there's two questions we ask, ask ourselves when we compare them. 
which hue level is flatter than this client's skin tone and which hue level is more similar to the skin tone. So we're going to look at Tanya here who has baby pink skin tones. And uh, she's going to be flowing better into the red, red, purple. But I want you to look at it and to see if you agree with that. So when we look here, we'll see her skin. And you can see how pretty her skin looks with this red, red, purple. Now, I'm going to click. And it's going to bring up red and then yellow, red, and yellow. So you'll be looking closely at what happens with her skin as I go through the different colors, because it's going to show one to the next to the next. So here we see a beautiful harmony with her pink tone. Now look at the reds. They're not as good as the red purple because suddenly we start to see a little bit of sallowness around her mouth. We go to the yellow reds and there's nothing flowing back and forth is there. It's not in harmony. Then we look at the yellows and there's definitely, there's no similarity is it? Because remember we look for flattering and then we look for similarity. So she definitely look better here, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. so that yeah. would be the way that we would put it into the computer because she's looking better in one and there wasn't a close second. So we're going to put in the coordinate numbers, we're going to put in the hue, and then it's uh, the computer is where we input it, and then it comes back with a seasonal name. Now, you don't have to buy any type of software to use to do this analysis. When you enroll as a, a consultant with Color Alliance, you would automatically get a link where you would put in your password to be able to go and put this in. And the nice part about it, we use to have to call during the daytime. Well, now you can put it in at two in the morning. I, I like to work at two in the morning. <laughs> so it's um, any time of day, you can actually be putting it in. It makes it so much more convenient. So once you put it in, it will come back and say true Azure Summer. And so the description is the third way we have of double checking where she finds, find, falls into her category. So her uh, name came back true Azure Summer. So Azure says soft pink tan or ivory skin tones harmonize with muted brown hair from the darkest through mid range ash browns and rose tinge brown. Eyes are from the purple, blue, and blue range, whether powder gray or deep and intense. So, yes, that does sound like her. Now, it may not be every single descriptive, descriptive word that you would have chose, but you can hear in the description, yeah, that does sound like her. Because a lustrous um, summer over here. So no, not her. So each description is going to um, give the characteristics of the color for that individual. So here we have Felicity. And remember the two questions, which hue drapes are flattering and which ones are similar to her skin tone. So as we go through this, again, I'm at, as I click on it, it'll go from one to the next to the next. Now you can see this red purple. Remember, we only look at skin here, not eyes and hair at this particular step. So when we look here, we can see it's not flowing with her skin, is it? It's separating, it looks harsh in comparison. Now look at when we move to the red. Do you see how she just got a glow about her all of a sudden? She brightened and there's just a beautiful coloring in her skin. We come here to the yellow reds, again, it's flattering and the golden tones are flattering. The second question was, which group is more similar? So we weeded out the red purples now we're looking at the golden, and yes, she has golden in her skin, but then we also see that the yellow red, she does have golden, which is yellow, and she does have red. So a yellow red would be her most similar. And as we go to the red, although it's flattering, she has more golden than just red in her skin tones. And that's why she would be doing best here in three. So in the analysis, when you put it into the computer, you would be putting three in there. And so uh, it's really fun to work with that. Then the fourth check and balance besides the description is the uh, comparative seasonal drapes. So she was a vivid cerulean autumn. And we see uh, the comparative drapes in autumn 
really bring out that richness in her coloring. Uh, her hair looks more vibrant, her eyes look deeper and more sparkly, and her skin takes a glow about it. So what we do is we're going to see, uh, compare the winter, which is cool, um, clear, and bright against the warm, rich uh, autumn colors and saturated, both of them are saturated. So we see the most difference between them. But you can see here, she's so much more vibrant. Here, it's kind of like a separation. She goes a little peaked in the skin. Her hair doesn't look as vibrant. Then we put the summer against the autumn. And we can see here that nothing's going on. They're just kind of sitting there. It's not emphasizing her, not making her glow like we see here. Then we compare it to the spring and we'll see that these are a little bit bright and um, don't bring out the richness. So we're looking at the color a little bit more here, but here we're looking at her and the colors enhance and uh, flow with her. So between the coordinates, the hue, uh, the description, which is here and I'm gonna read, and the uh, comparative drapes, those are our four checks and balances. So for a vivid, for the cerulean, it says luxuriant brown hair harmonizes with a range of brown eye colors. Hers are chestnut. Clear and lively skin tones in golden tan. So she has golden skin, luxuriant brown hair, and chestnut eyes would describe her. But instead of saying all that, we'd say she's a cerulean autumn. So here I have a couple examples. We have a, a winter where, well, we have two winters, two contrasting two winters, but different middle names, but they both have brown eyes. So even that can differentiate in that middle um, name so that we can differentiate between a dynamic and an exotic. So remember when I was talking about value and importance of value, it's not that white wouldn't be in her palette of colors, but is it her best balance? Look at how much more vibrant she looks here in that nice, uh, deep, um, kind of a blue, you know, not a midnight blue, but a little bit uh, brighter blue. And it's balancing because of her contrast very nicely. So then we go into our contrasting here and her contrast comes from her eyes to her hair. So her palette overall is a little bit lighter and um, doesn't have, if we put this palette, it'd be just a little overpowering in her. They're still clear, but they're not quite as contrasting as what we see there. So the palettes are a lot of fun to work with. Here we have two summers. Remember, we had um, 15 different middle names for summers. We have an azure summer here, but here, what I was showing on the before and after is, it's not that these colors are bad for her, but look at how much better the mid-range, the true colors in blue are balancing and bringing out her eyes and just a better balance for her. Um, Lauren is a light garnet summer. And so if we think of light, when we put the dark to light colors here, do you see how it's too heavy, too contrasting that we're looking at that versus her right away? Whereas here, this lifts eye to her because of the way the values work with her. Her uh, coloring is a little bit brighter also because of the blue eyes, I mean, because of the brown eyes. And so her palette is lighter, but also a little warmer or brighter, but still cool. Then we have two um, springs here. Remember, we had 31 different types of springs. We have a true topaz spring and a light animated. Here, what I was trying to show is it's not that this blue is bad for her, but in this one, we're also going to look at the intensifier. What really brings the color out in the skin? Uh, so that would be a good swimsuit color. Uh, what brings the eye color out? So she has a yellow green. So purple really brings the color in her eyes out beautifully. And her palette reflects a little brighter chroma than and a little lighter than what our true does. So going back to our summer, do you see light skin, medium hair, medium eyes? And here we have light skin, medium hair, medium eyes, but one's high chroma, one's low chroma. So the value does not have to do with the color itself or the chroma, it's just the lightness or darkness. So then we have two autumns and true radiant and a vivid cerulean. And you'll see there are similarities, of course, between the palettes, but 
the uh, vivid is a little more saturated in the colors than what the true uh, radiant is. And the balance will be there then uh, in um, a, a better balance will work there. So in color lines, our coordinates determine the relationship to all colors. So if we were looking at coordinates and we were looking at the second one in, we would see that it fits somewhere around here. It's not going to be way up here. It's not going to be way down there. It's not real neutral. But because each coordinate has a number on the you when they pick the palettes, the computer has already put all the colors that should go into the palette. So you order the palette, they get a picking slip of all the colors that should harmonize with that person. And they start building it up from the bottom up. They have a clipboard with a screw up through it. And so they're building it uh, color by color from what was generated from the computer. So um, the, your, your color palette would be unique to you. Even if you have the same color name, it would still have some various differences, a lot of similarities, but still some unique differences. The only way you'd have the same palette is if the coordinates for the skin, hair, and eyes would be the same. This is a picture of the room where they actually um, pull the palettes. And so you'll see all these different colors and you'll see the coordinates that you would be using and the golds and the coppers and the chips and so forth. So um, this is where they would be pulling the palette. Remember, they do it, uh, hand pick it. It's not put together, uh, you know, overall before, but they do hand pick it together. Okay, so then we're going to show the lifestyle color palette to uh, our clients. And so in class, we're going to learn all about how to uh, talk about the harmony when they're using their palette, what to look for. We're going to talk about color combinations like complementary and analogous color schemes. And so we can actually go in and work with what's going to uh, bring out the eye color, like the intensifiers, to bring this uh, hair and the skin and the eyes out to enliven it. And so we say those are some of their star colors, the colors that really make them glow. And so those are all things that we uh, go through in Color Lions. So then in Color Lions, the three parts of the seasonal name also make selecting makeup colors a science and the way you apply it in art. So our um, three uh, names actually take the guesswork out of selecting just the right hue uh, value in chroma so that it's always in harmony with the individual. Uh, so we look at light to vivid and contrasting for the value. And remember that was blush, lipstick, and lip liner. Hue combination is that poetic name, and so we have eyeshadow charts that work with the hues that are in the individual, so it always looks very harmonious there too. And then we have chroma, of course, the warm or the cool as we're working with that. So then we have um, charts that help us to determine she's azure summer, so we have banana cream, cotton candy, silver lilac, malted mac, teal, zeal, run the world, rich navy, and imperial blue. That would be ones that we would say harmonize and complement with her. Then uh, we have um, in, in the color lines, we look at the basic um, patterns, eye patterns, and then we recommend where to put those colors according to their eye shape. And so we learn all about the different eye shapes and where to apply it. So then remember I was talking about uh, light and contrasting. So we have blush, lip liners, and lipsticks, and they're within those categories. So you can see down here, two of uh, the lipstick and blush are lighter, then more medium, then vivid, a little bit deeper. And then here it's a little bit brighter in the contrast. The same for the warm over here. So we have light to vivid and contrasting within all four seasons. And um, every seasonal name will have one of those four names, light to vivid or contrasting. So then here is just um, showing the kids into play when we're working with it. And um, of course, on the um, Inside Color Me uh, site, it shows the items that are in it. So everybody needs to have the color lines, um, color and, excuse me, everybody needs the color and skincare kit in order to work with the color lines. So they both work together um, for us to do the training. We, we can't do one without the other.
And so then um, we have drapes and those will be ordered separately, but the hue drapes are included in the kit at this time. So those are all the tools need needed to do the color lines training. If you go to the um, uh, dot biz site and look under the tab color lines is going to show this this particular kit 365 that is both flory or um, color me beautiful it's the same their makeup products are different but the tools for the color are the same within both of them and um, but when you do that, you do have to sign up for a training because we don't want you out there with all these wonderful tools and not know how to use them. So we do, you do need to have a training when you do order that kit. And it's the same with the Flory kit. Um, it's, we've got the same color tools and signature tools, but the um, skincare and the makeup would be different colors within that. But you need the starter kit to do that too. So um, that's just telling you a little bit about where to find the information. And of course, we would tell you more about it. We have a three-day training with color lines because there's a lot to learn, a lot to work with in the different tools we have. And so the first day is an introduction to the concepts of color lines. And then uh, you also will experience your own color analysis. So you can purchase your own palette. Then the, the palette does not come in. Uh, with the cost of the training or the kit. Uh, introduction of the selection of makeup colors according to art and science. This day two, we introduce the palettes. There's a lot of information we give on the Color Alliance palette. We talk about skincare and makeup and the colors on application techniques. And we actually have you observe um, color analysis or our, if it's online training, we would have you um, review it in the course of each step along the way that we would do. And then um, day three would have more to do with Signia because we would introduce the con um, concepts. We'd work with the measurements, the face shape, the body proportions and create harmony. And then uh, we'd look at outside and inside lines. So we look at what necklines and patterns and eyewear and accessories all work together. We uh, talk about men's Signia consultation. And then we also go over the guidance on how to place orders for the palettes, Signia and other products. And uh, of course, throughout the course of the three days, we talk about marketing and client care. So that gives you a really brief overview. I, it may seem lengthy to you, but it was um, just to give you a taste of the different things that we look at because Sharon had asked that we would, um, I would show the uniqueness of the difference in working with color lines. So I hope that that fulfilled that, Sharon. It and does. now I was going to introduce you to the trainers. Uh, we have Sandy Baum in Missouri, Anne Morgan in Fairfax, and myself here in Manassas. Uh, we're both in Virginia. And I thought I would give them just a few minutes. I think I've left enough time for them to just take and um, share a little bit of why they love um, the Color Alliance concept and also uh, teaching about it. So um, whoever wants to start first, Sandy or Anne. I can go ahead, Jill. Okay, go ahead. Well, I have been working with color analysis for many years, but when I was introduced to Color Alliance, it was so exciting. I had known for a long time that I was an autumn, but at the same time, I found that there were some autumn colors that I either didn't wear or I would put them on and I'd have to end up covering them up with a scarf. But what it taught me, my color name is Contrasting Rich Autumn. And I do, I look my best when I do light and dark or dark and bright or bright and bright. In other words, uh, in those true category, I don't do well with that up around my face. I either need light or bright. And you know what? It really solved a lot of shopping problems for me. So I never teach a new consultant or do a color alliance for a client that I don't have to share that because it was one of the biggest wow moments for me. And what I love about Color Alliance is not just what it did for me, but seeing other people 
just come alive and be excited and love to shop with their palate. And, you know, you get a lot of referrals that way because they, they go shopping with their palate and the sales person or whoever's nearby will say, what are you doing? Where did you get that? but it, it is just really fun. And I refer to Color Alliance as your color DNA. It's as individual as your thumbprint. It is very unique. And I could tell you lots more, but I wanna leave Anne some time. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Sandy. Anne? Um, yeah, I mean, I, ca I can't argue with any of it, what either of you have said. I guess I, the reason I um, was drawn to Color Alliance was because um, I really wanted to be able to give the client the most accurate information. And it stands to reason, you look around the world, um, and there's not just four kinds of coloring, you know, it's a continuum, people can be borderline, and even if you're very clearly within a season, um, the, uh, how light or dark you are, the individual colors of, of your skin, hair, and eyes all make a difference in how the colors look on you. Um, and so, um, you know, Color Alliance just, just makes sense in terms of giving each person a really, uh, really individualized color prescription. Um, I think the system is very learnable and very teachable. Um, I, I, you know, a lot of times people come, particularly when it's a male client, come to me thinking, you know, this is voodoo or something, or maybe I just, you know, pull out their colors because of my own personal excellent taste. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, it, it, it makes sense. Um, and, uh, and the logic to it um, combines with, you know, the, the obvious artistic beauty of the colors. And, um, and the result is a really coherent, uh, you know, I think it's all about the coherent picture where the person um, is, uh, um, uh, you know, just uh, the, but the person is wearing and the person themselves come together and reinforce one another and just um, pull together in a beautiful way. And um, I love sharing it. So um, anyway, um, it, it, I, uh, it, it's uh, having, having two of us, Jill and I both, you know, relatively close, you know, in terms of um, being trainers in this area, I, I tend to let her her do the in-person trainings, um, you know, unless uh, sometimes I have a, a, you know, a strong relationship with somebody I've brought in, but, um, but I do a lot of the online ones, um, and I tend, I think probably most of us do it the same way, where you don't do three days online, people would die, but you break it up into approximately two-hour segments usually, um, and space them out a little bit. And it actually gives you a little bit more um, uh, uh, freedom to um, think about it and absorb it in a more gradual way. Right, right. Right. So everybody can do the online a little differently. I have had people who want to do like three, four days in a row. I have people who want to do it two hours at a time. It depends on how fast they want to get through it. Sometimes I've done an hour with people and then two hours other times and three hours other times. So we can be very flexible when we do do the online classes overall. And I wanted to just say a little bit about um, our business, because our business is such a um, wonderful uh, business to encourage and help other pe people feel good about themselves. And yes, we earn a living this way, but there is nothing more rewarding than to help someone feel so much better about the way they look and the confidence. And um, one of my clients, uh, when uh, she came to me, she had been divorced and remarried. And so she got herself and she was looking so good. And her husband said, her ex-husband, not her husband, her ex-husband said, why didn't you look this way when, <laughs> before when you were married to me? 
<laughs> so it can change the opinion of other people too, not just, um, you know, the first um, impression that you give to people. And uh, just to tell, again, going back to my years um, that I've been in the business, it was several years after I had been doing Color Alliance that I went home and my mom's home and um, I found when we were looking through things to clean out, you know, that she had for years in her basement of our stuff that we left there. And I found a, por um, a portfolio from college because I had a home economics background. And in that portfolio, I had had to uh, take color at watercolors and come up with my skin tone, my hair color and my eye color. And then I had to design three outfits for my you know, silhouette body. And I hadn't even thought about it, but that was my very favorite art class of all the classes I took. So see, it was in my blood from way, way back way then yeah. until now. And um, the passion, the people who come in and do color lines, I think have a passion that you just fall in love with uh, the system. And so uh, just know it's very rewarding. So that is the story of Color Alliance. It will help you grow your business. Um, you can join us on this unique color journey and you will enjoy a very loyal client pace. I have um, some of my very first clients when I came here uh, to the Manassas area. I, um, you know, that was many, however many years ago since I came here to Manassas, like almost 20 some and, or more. <laughs> and um, I still have some of my very first clients as clients today because we started with them in color lines and they've been very, very loyal. So I know you could have a very loyal client base um, from doing this unique color system. So Sharon, any questions or well, anything anybody there wants are, to ask? There is um, a question, a couple, a question and a comment in the chat. Um, Christine, Sherlock, I guess I didn't see that. Yeah. Uh, so, let me um, see. Uh, Christine said, I guess Jill, I, are you oh, here paying? I see there's two. You see it? Yeah. Okay. So let me bring that up over here. Absolutely. Yes, to, uh, uh, who yes, was Christine. that? So Jill, are you saying warm seasons such as spring and autumn are high chroma and the cool seasons are low chroma? Yes, and it's never so cut and dry because we could have summers who have a little bit more brightness, but they're still cool, but some palettes might have a little bit more brightness to it, but not as what we would see in the spring palette. So there's a whole oh. range of variation uh, within that. Jill, when you talk about chroma, are you saying the brightness chroma is a saturation of color, a brightness of color. the brightness of the color. Uh -huh. OK, so why wouldn't winter be very highly saturated since winters wear royal blues and true red? Well, that's the colors they wear, but their own coloring is usually pretty low chroma, but they balance. That's where art and science come together. So they balance well with uh, the bright saturated but colors. If, you, if their own coloring is low chroma, why would you put high chroma colors on them? Because that's what balances the art of balance. Because mm -hmm. with low chroma, they can carry off the brightness. It would balance with them, with it overall. And then Lynn says, Felicity has makeup on. You didn't mention this at all done with a clean no makeup face. Yes. So definitely when you do this, you definitely want to have. So those were models from uh, iStock. But you definitely want to have the makeup cleaned off before you look at the skin and the hair and the eyes because you don't want it to be distorted mm -hmm. with the color they have on in their makeup and so forth. Okay. Are there any other okay. questions for Jill? Or Sandy or Ann? Everybody's is, so quiet. I know. I just, <laughs> I just have a comment. Uh, I just want to say I'm, I'm still new. I still fairly new and learning so much. I love seeing you, Jill. Good. Uh, yes, it was fun to see you. Are I, you doing okay? 
I'm doing great. I'm doing, yes. I'm in Mexico. I came for a treatment. I'm doing color. People are asking me to. Oh, I didn't wonderful. Intend to, but they ask me, they hear about what I'm doing. And they, I brought everything, of course. I brought my tools. I almost get uh, put on the no fly list because I had my caliper, a metal caliper <laughs> with me. And they didn't know what it was. And they kept out what on inspecting it. Yeah, they were checking it for sharpness. And it was just such a drain. I was so upset, <laughs> you know, like, oh my God. And you but didn't want to leave just, it there. <laughs> no, no, heck no. I would have fought for it. <laughs> but I just want to say that I, I, how much I love it, how excited it makes me, like you said, when I find my clients' colors and, and how happy they get. I had a, a client, she's a designer, and, and she was one of my teachers when I was doing community college design class, and she wanted to have her colors because she had them done a long time ago. And then I did her colors. She, she's blonde and liked, and I thought she was going to be a spring. But the, the system thought she was an autumn. And I, I trusted the system. I went with it. And she was so happy and so pleased because she's the very golden, very oh. golden. And all those autumn colors uh, harmonize greatly with her. And it just gives you so much pleasure when you find, uh, you know, the colors for a person and they're so happy. And, and I also look at all the palettes I ordered, even though they have similar names, they're all totally different. So I tell my clients, yeah. this is very personalized this is just for you it's your unique uh, palette and I just get very very excited for them and I'm just I just love it and I I think we just have to trust the system mm -hmm. because it really picks the best colors for for each individual client and I, I just love it I'm enjoying it so much that's what I always say when people are um doing this I said first of all you get confidence in yourself and confidence in the system because the more you do then the more you see how it all works in such beautiful harmony so that's okay. great well, Linda Linda had her hand raised and then Jolita is um asked the question about the cost for training so Linda uh do you want to ask your question oh we could yes um I have so many questions have you ever had identical twins and do their palettes come out identical or is it just that yes I, I can give you a I, I'll give you a personal example I have um, identical twins as nieces and they were out mm -hmm. here in Virginia and one was training horses and one was going to nursing school and they had the same skin tone they had the same eye color but because um, one was out and they both had blonde hair, but one was, a, you know, a little bit deeper in the blonde where the other is a little lighter, but it was natural out um, in the sun. And so it had just lightened a little bit. So their palettes came back, both, both of them were true honey tone spring. But when the palette came back, it was reflected in the palette. And what was so interesting about it, Amy is... Um, kind of shy and a little more conservative and um, doesn't like, you know, all glitz and glamour and, you know, she's just a little more toned down. And then um, Rachel was someone who loved the glitz and the glamour and the bright colors and their pal palettes reflected that. Uh, okay. Rachel's was brighter because of the depth of brightness in her hair or whatever. And so when we came to the intensifiers, which we have intensifiers for skin, hair, and eyes, it was so much fun to see the differences even in their intensifiers. So yeah, it is unique in that way. But if they had the exact same coordinates, like if both of their hair colors had been the same, then that wouldn't have reflected in the palette. It would have been sim you know, same palettes then. Does That's that answer your question? <laughs> yes, it's very interesting. Good. And, and uh, Jolita um, wanted to know, and I'm sure there may be others that have the same question, Jill, I may about have the, missed. the cost of the training. Uh, so Jolita said, she said, I may have missed the discussion on the investment for the training. What is the fee? Okay, mm -hmm. so by the time you order the two kits and the drapes and that little white drape that you want, it's about 635 to 65, depending on the cost of the drapes, I guess. And um, 
Yes. So you'd have that investment and then you'd have 500 for the training. So really for the cost of um, getting the tools and the training, you have a business that you're starting and it's the same cost as if you took a class at the university. It's about the comparable in cost to that. So it's a very good investment towards a beautiful business. Can I say something? Yes. Hello? Hi, this is Marie. So I trained with Jill. Hi, Jill. Jill's amazing. Hi, um, Marie. Yeah, it, it, it's an intense three days and you do learn a lot. Um, so I definitely recommend Jill. And I have a quick question. Where did you guys get those darn metal calipers? Because I'm trying to find it and I don't really even find one on Amazon. Amazon. Uh, I think it was a uh, um, Bleak's art, art. Yeah. Shop uh, Blix. Blix Art Supply. How do you uh, I think if you went back through your papers from training, you'll see it. Uh, yeah, it's Blix. Blix. Boy L I C K. Blix. Blix Art Supply. Okay. And is there any certain yes. inches, inches you get? Or, or? Well, you get the largest metal yes. one they have there. There's much larger calipers anywhere, but you're, they're usually like 390. So those are about 12. Yeah. 13 yeah. something this like that. This is a 12 inch 20, 12 inch one. I, yeah. And well, that's big you, enough. I mean, the 12 inch one is good, 12 inches. Okay. Yeah, yeah the biggest one you can get the three oh. that's offer in Blake's art supply. So you want the larger yeah. one. I think oh. they have an eight inch and um mm -hmm. so oh, whatever no, that larger small. one is. I have to go. Thank you. Okay. Thank have you. a nice okay. evening. Thanks. Bye. Any other questions? If not, we are finished for the evening and thank you for attending and hopefully you um, get a better understanding about color lines. Thank you, Jill. This has been great. And um, uh, this has been recorded. So we'll make sure that we send it out for everyone and you can share it with those that um, you want to get interested in the business or those that uh, perhaps are already on your teams that um, have a question about what Color Alliance is. It's a phenomenal system, and we're glad that you had the opportunity to be able to come tonight. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jill. You're and welcome. thank you for everyone that made um, the, the training meaningful with your questions and your feedback. All right, so have a great evening. You guys are beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Jill. Right. Thank you, Sharon. All right. Thank you. Good night, Bye. everybody. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Thank you, Sharon. Bye-bye. Good night.